Uh, we're going to see how to use a manometer and how to set up the manometer experiment um, in this video. So as you can see here, usually a typical manometer has two tubes, so kind of one inside another one. So as you can see, there is a hole there and there is a hollow tube, um, so it's not a solid piece. So um, when you place this, uh, so the, if the flow is coming is straight this way, entering that uh, the tip, it will read both dynamic and static pressure. And then you can see here a bunch of holes here. So that holes is the in on the outside tube, which will only read is static because when it's going this way, there will be only static pressure on this surface because surface particles not moving. So we'll we'll show how to place on that. So we can probably so on this fan setup. This is a big. Uh, dynamometer fan, it simulates the actual road um, flow, air flow. So the flow is coming from this way and it has to perfectly uh, kind of this setup. Yeah, so it, it has to go straight to that tip and this setup will help you to kind of place it like a uh, perpendicularly, as you can see here, like this and that way we can make sure that we get all the dynamic flow into the tip also static and then this one this a small little holes only going to read the, the static pressure now then as you can see we have this manometer connected to an inclined manometer because if it's water and this is simply air pressure so there will be not much uh, differences. So this is only a one inch manometer. Now before you start you must have this piece labeled. There is a screw there you can adjust and there is a level here. So make sure it's labeled first and make sure that you have enough fluid. If it's labeled it should be at zero right here and if you have enough fluid. So right now it has zero reading. So everything is perfectly set up. Now we're going to start the fan right now and show you how the manometer uh, reading is going to change as the fan gets its speed up. Now the fan is on. As you can see here, the, the manometer reading is changing. It's changing. And it will get stable depending on how fast it is uh, moving, how fast the air is moving. So what we're trying to do here to calculate the velocity. So there is a formula in the procedure sheet uh, that you can use to calculate the velocity and make sure you kind of look at this line perpendicularly so you don't kind of misread it. Um, it's, it's getting slowly adjusted around 30.3 inches of water. Uh, it's getting a little bit more. It's still getting It's about 0.31. Now uh, we're going to show it using a digital one. So then we'll just disconnect the manometer. This is a digital manometer. Uh, so now we're going to uh, change that manometer line to the digital one and you will see that it will very quickly uh, There should be some. So that's it responds very quickly, but yes. it is not very smooth. Yeah. It's kind of flicking all over. Uh, it's probably because of. Let me it's see. It's just the way that it responds. So let's see. 
it will eventually get about 30.31 which we have get from the manual manometer so let's see what do you think So then we, we disconnect that and put it in the uh, the manual manometer, which read. This one is very precise because this inclined manometer is about just one inch, uh, but as you can see here, it's about a couple of foot. So uh, it is very sensitive. So. And because it's just air, there is not much pressure developed. Uh, so it's not changing so abruptly. So it's going towards around 0 0.31 or so. And uh, in the formula, all you need is that reading. Uh, and then uh, to get the velocity. Once you get the velocity, then you can get the, um, the, the area of this piece, the cross section. Uh, so you're gonna measure from that corner to that corner, which is about 36 inches, and that high to there, which is about 24 inches. So he's going to show, so that's about 24 inches, and that's about 36 inches. So you know the cross section area, you know the velocity, so then velocity times cross section will give you the flow rate. And then once you know the flow rate, um, there is also a formula that you can use to calculate the, uh, the, the horsepower developed by this flow. So I think that's all we wanted to talk about. Again, this should be perpendicular. Now in the lab, there are nine holes here, so you may be assigned to just one particular um, hole to collect the data, and then um, basically average all these to get as accurate velocity as possible. But you may not be responsible for all of these together. There is a marking here which hole is what, so make sure you read the correct, uh, you set up that in a correct place and then uh, get the reading. Shouldn't be too different, but um, it's still there is a difference. That's why you have nine of these here. So I think that's all. Well.